Hi, welcome back to our channel. I'm Chase from Chase and Malia, and today is our final video on this pedal board project. Today I'm gonna to tell you all the mistakes I made so that you can avoid them. So the first mistake that I notice are these butterfly latches. They're not perfectly lined up. Not a structural issue, it just bothers me. The mistake was made when I cut these lower pieces in the board itself. I cut these first, measured from the side so that they were symmetrical, but I didn't take my time and line up here and here to make sure that they were exactly aligned. So the second issue I'm having are with these tearaway hinges. I believe it's with my spacing in the box itself. If I had sunk the lower bar a little bit lower, that could have helped, but I still needed it to be high enough to reach these butterfly hinges. There's just some variables there that I didn't account for. I installed those feet and that helped somewhat, but still every time I open the case, the hinge falls down into the bar and then it gets bent. When I open it, I have to make sure that I pull the hooks against the bar as I'm lowering the pedal board. Otherwise, it gets bent. So at this point, the only way I feel like I can repair it is by possibly using either a different hinge. There are what are called lift-off hinges that slide and they have a bar. They don't have any play, so there's no chance of it bending. I don't prefer those hinges. I prefer these hinges. Because I didn't originally sink the bar side and the spacing within the case itself is already set, I'm kind of married to the setup that I have. Possibly I'm gonna try those other hinges or I can put a small piece here and here in order to lift the board and keep it on top of the bar side of the hinge. So something I've already mentioned a few times is the squareness of the pedal board itself. I remember the moment, and I believe we have footage, of when I joined the pedal board together, I didn't clamp it. I put a speed square in it in all the corners to make sure that it was square, and it was for a moment. But once we let it dry without being clamped in that position, it lost its square and there was no going back. If I were to do it again, I would use the speed square in the corners and then clamp the pieces in place. This is mainly a cosmetic issue. The way it fits into the case, the way this bottom piece fits on, there are gaps. And while it doesn't give me any issues, I would prefer it if it was a little tighter and neater. Something that I feel like I could have done a lot better is cable management. I focus so much on making the case, joining the wood, um, screwing the parts, what kind of hardware I needed that I didn't even stop to think about how to organize my cables. There are lots of YouTube videos out there where you can learn how to best manage your cables to keep them from making noise in your audio, audio signal, as well as giving you clean power so that it doesn't affect your pedals negatively. This is an ongoing process and I plan on cleaning up my cables in the future, but you should consider this while doing your build. So this one wasn't necessarily a mistake, but it definitely slowed me down and sucked my time. There's an order of operations when you're installing different things. You saw me do that twice with those cables. I put it all together and then I had no way to install it into the board. So make sure that when you're installing something, you do it in the right order. Think about how it goes together and then put it together. This last one caused me the most issues. As you know from the pedal board build video, I went off Daniel Tyke's design. I installed hinges so that I could get underneath my pedal board. I used cabinet friction catches to keep the board closed while it was in its case and also give it a nice snap when, and secure when it was closed. This worked on another pedal board that I had, but that pedal board was not as big as this one. Unfortunately though, those friction catches could not handle the weight of my pedals. I was still set on having a lid that I could open, so I needed to figure out some sort of locking mechanism. I went and found some pieces at Ace Hardware and using those cable management tools, I found something that works for now. I might change it later to like some sort of slide lock, but I don't know if you've checked the prices on those. They're like $12, so I'm just gonna use my little $2 um, hook piece and it's actually working very well. So all of these issues, I believe, could have been solved with one thing, taking my time. I was in such a rush to complete this project because I just wanted to play guitar. There's a quick and easy solution for if you want a pedal board to play guitar, but you don't wanna put in the time for it like I did, you just buy one. I wish that I would have been more patient, taken my time, really made this thing fit the way I wanted it to fit. There's a reason why measuring twice and cutting once is a thing. My dad keeps telling me that you can always cut more, you can't cut less. 
So when you're taking on your project, keep that in mind. You're either taking your time on the front end to make it look nice, or you're taking it on the back end to fix what you did wrong. So if you would like to build your own pedal board, but you're not sure about how to do it or that you have the skills, don't worry, I didn't either. I think that I made mistakes and you might too, but in the end, you're still gonna have, probably have a pretty cool pedal board. If you do wanna take on a project like this, be sure to check out West Coast Pedal Board. I could not have finished this project without their products. If through this process you're finding that this is a lot of work and you don't really want to do that, West Coast Pedal Board also offers completed boards and they're beautiful. So whether you want to build your own or buy something completed, they've got something for you. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We upload videos weekly. Thank you to my friends and family that helped me make this project happen. And a big thank you to West Coast Pedal Board for making this project possible. I'm Chase from Chase and Malia. We'll see you next time.